Today we remember the souls of Manfredo Caro, Joao Diaz, and James and Brian Laundry. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. As we come together to celebrate the Eucharist, we remember our need for God's mercy and forgiveness in our lives. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you nourish us in word and sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we long for your returning glory at the end of time. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. After Jeremiah had spoken all that the Lord had commanded, the officials of Judah came from the king's house and took their seat at the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, this man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, It is the Lord who sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now, therefore, amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will change his mind about the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, here I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will be bringing innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Then the officials and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, This man does not deserve the sentence of death, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. But the hand of Ahikim, son of Shaphan, was with Jeremiah, so that he was not given over into the hands of the people to be put to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Rescue me from the sinking in the mire. Let me de be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Lord, Lord in your great love, answer me. Do not let the flood sweep over me, or the deep swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. The Lord, in your great love, answer me. But I am lowly and in pain. Let your salvation, O God, protect me. I will praise the name of God, with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Lord, in your great love, answer me. 
Let the oppressed see it and be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his own that are in bonds. Lord, in your great love, answer me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Herod the ruler heard reports about Jesus, and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife because John had been telling him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Though Herod wanted to put him to death, he feared the crowd because they regarded John as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of, Her the daughter of Herodias danced before the company, and she pleased Herod so much that he promised an oath to grant her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist, here, on a platter. The king was grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he commanded it to be given. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison. The head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, who brought it to her mother. His disciples came and took the body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A few years ago, I watched Richard Strauss's opera, Salome, on Met, Met Opera on Demand on the internet. And that opera retells the story of the beheading of John the Baptist. The focus of Strauss's work is the teenage daughter, Herodias. Strauss's opera takes license a little bit with today's gospel narrative, and it wants us to delve into the psyche of Salome and her mother Herodias and uncover why they, why they hated John the Baptist so much, where that hatred is rooted. Herodias hated John the Baptist because John the Baptist saw her sin and the sin of Herod. John the Baptist spoke the truth, and Herodias could not stand it, and that resulted in this visceral hatred that is played out so well uh, in the Gospel and also in, in Strauss's work. Uh, in a homily in 2019, Pope Francis described the hatred, that particular hatred, as Satan's breath, saying it is very powerful, capable of doing anything except loving. That is what hatred is, isn't it? To think of it as Satan's breath. It's the, it's the evil. The devil's version of love is hatred. This spirit of hatred seeks all of us, and we must be prepared, outfitted with the power of Jesus and his love to combat it. Pope Francis explained that behind Herodias and Salome and Herod, stood Satan. And Pope Francis said that Satan sowed hatred in the women there, vanity in the girl, and corruption in the king. The opera by Strauss presents Herod's dilemma and indecisiveness well. You see how tormented Herod was, and that comes out in the gospel too. 
Herod actually, in one of the Gospel readings, kind of likes John the Baptist. He likes listening to John the Baptist. He believed in John the Baptist, but his indecisiveness and his weakness ruined him as a man. John the Baptist prepared the way for the Messiah. From the very beginning of John the Baptist's ministry, we learn that St. John the Baptist always was preparing the way for our Lord. His very humble spirit directed the people to God. John the Baptist stayed in the shadows and he let Jesus shine. It's beautiful, that, that image. He foreshadowed our Lord, but at no point wanted to be compared with him. Pope Francis tells us that John the Baptist moved into the background until he was extinguished, until he was beheaded in the dark and lonely cell of the prison. The Pope sums it up perfectly by telling us that this great man of God ended up alone in a dark prison cell, the victim of the whim of a vain dancer, the hatred of a diabolical woman, and the corruption of a vacillating king. John died in anonymity, a victim of hatred. There are many takeaways from the gospel, and we get to hear this gospel story three times throughout the church year. Uh, and I'm not really sure why that is set up that way in, in scripture readings by the church, but it's poignant. And each, there's so much in the story of John the Baptist that each time we hear the gospel, I think we can take more and more away, reflect on a different part of it. Looking at the life and death of John the Baptist, we learn that being faithful to God at no point guarantees that we're not going to suffer. In fact, it kind of suggests that we will suffer, and the gospel tells us to be prepared for suffering, but that sometimes suffering is part of our path, and it always is. Suffering may be, as it was for John, a consequence of being faithful to God and to his church and speaking out against evil and the breath of Satan. People who are imprisoned for their stance on pro-life is an example of that. People who are standing up for what is right and being persecuted for it. It's good for us to remember that if Satan's breath is hatred, God's breath is sweet, light, and above all, is love. Jesus, by virtue of his own suffering, walks with us through the valleys. He understands the human struggling because he has been there. And it's when we are at our lowest point that he carries us, that he reassures us that he is always near. And so today we pray, St. John the Baptist, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed, be God. Blessed, be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all God's holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer one another a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold the risen Lord who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I leave my phone in the office before I come to the church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorifying the Lord through our lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.